Yeah, you're liking that, right? <laughs> and now he's going to start licking your arm. Bro, get your big wet face out of here, Kenji. I like his licking, actually. He's got a very coarse tongue. It does, right? Coarse yeah. tongue. So get up on that mic, baby. Get up on that mic. And uh, the closer, the better. That's just... And then you can adjust it. Right up on it. Can you hear me? <laughs> Always. <laughs> we can hear you. Well, listen. Welcome back to Thank the you. studio, Thank round you. two. Good to be back. You were our... Uh, what were you? You were our... First guest. I think so. Yeah. 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 I'm flattered. Good to <laughs> be f- back. It's been too long. How long? That was over a good o- uh, over a year Oh, well ago. over yeah, a year ago. over a year ago. Well over. Yeah. yeah we, um, because we had started it in, make my dog sneeze from the hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, he's having a sneezing fit. He's, he's waiting for a bless you. Sorry, Kenji. That, that's all right. Um, but yeah, you sound a little, a little horsey. Do I? Yeah, I don't know. You breaking that microphone when you bring it home, bro? What's going on over there? Yeah, I hope not. Kind of hear it too. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we had recorded four or five episodes prior and then we had you come on, jump on and, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of what started and now we're like episode 50 something. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we've been doing our thing. We were supposed, I mean, we were supposed to have some, I, we say it almost every show. We we're supposed mm-hmm. to have some crazy people. Dorian was supposed to come on and triple H and we That's had, awesome. yeah, we had some cool people like time. getting ready. We'll do time. Crazy times, man. It messed up. Uh... A lot of things up for people. Yeah, it's 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 been strange. I mean, how? So let's kind of let's kind of back up for a second. So you didn't do the Olympia this year, which was kind of crazy. No, because I, I usually see you balls to the wall, getting ready, yeah. head down, doing your thing. Uh, and you didn't do the Arnold. No. So kind of what? I, I we we we've both been busy with our own shit. Yeah. So like, what what what's we been going on? With, up in a while. I know what's mm-hmm. been going on. Well, you know. Since Classic Physique, it came about 2016, I qualified that first year, and every year since I've been in the Olympia, you know, it wasn't even like a, it wasn't even a question, you know. For me, like I, I always say, if you have a chance, the opportunity to compete, you're qualified, it's like, do it, it's Olympia. Mm-hmm. I didn't skip a beat for, you know, since 2014 when I turned pro, just constantly just prepping, competing, prepping, competing. And uh, last year, I didn't qualify because I got eighth place. So immediately, I kept on dieting, and immediately I went to California. I did two shows. I got second in the first one. Next, next weekend, I got first, and I qualified. So I got my, call, got, got my qualification out of the way, came back home, and started training, training my ass off, trying to improve. And, uh, you know, I know where I need to improve to be in that top three again. So continue to do that. And um, I just, you know, it's been so many years I've been training. We were just talking before, before the mm-hmm. show about the high-intensity training I've been doing for 20 years, yeah. you know. And I'm just a little beat up. I have some aches and pains. In the past couple of years, I haven't been 100%. Since 2016, I haven't been 100%. Mm-hmm. But I push through. I work around a couple things. But when it, it, it builds up and it's more than two or three injuries, you're working around everything and you're not really training at 100%. You're not even training at 90 or 80%. So um, I've had a TFL issue. I've had this really bad pain in my outer quads, my TFL. It's been bothering me for a couple of years. It was to the point where I couldn't do a body weight squat, getting in and out of the car hurt. My leg workouts were like almost three hours because it took me so long to warm up. And then during COVID, I started having a pain on the left side of my hip and it wasn't that bad training, believe it or not. But when I come to put up, put lift my foot up to put my shoe on, it would hurt. I just did it and it hurts right mm. now. And I'm like, what is this? Uh, it didn't go away. So I went and got an MRI. So my labrum on the left side and my glute on the left side are torn. Mm. That being said, I mean, listen, if you go under an MRI, you have almost everything is torn. You know, yeah, shoulders have tears. So it's about how bad is it? Mm-hmm. So I kept training and I kept pushing forward. And I said, you know, I'm still going to do my thing. And I started prepping for the Olympia and I just wasn't 100%. I didn't have one workout throughout the week. It's very sad to say this, but I didn't have one workout that I was okay and I was just training without working around something, you know? So for you younger guys that are listening, uh, you know, cherish that shit. It's, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing to just go in the gym and just give everything you got. And as long as you're training smart, not have any aches or pains. I've never been like a wild stupid trainer i've always been very smart you know good form and controlled but listen we we lift heavy you know throwing around heavy weights it's it has it, it takes its toll on you absolutely yeah. man so i just wasn't anything close to 100 percent. i just kept saying you know what i'm gonna keep going i'll decide next month decide next month i did this all the way up until i think it was seven weeks out and i was just like you know what this doesn't make sense for me to keep pushing forward 
I'm not at 100%, how am I going to be back in that top three or that top five? Mm -hmm. Is it worth doing just to be there? And for me, the answer was no. I've never been one of those guys, you know, like, I'm just happy to be here. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to be in the position I am, to have the qualification, to be able to step my two feet on that stage. Absolutely. But I, I want to win. I want to do really well. I want to be my best. And I didn't feel like I, would, I was going to be anywhere near my best, you know? So... I, I got I got where out. I got where you were throwing a towel in. I, I you, you know, I want to see I want to be cheering you on, man. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it was tough, you know. It wasn't that weird like watch everyone's like asking me, "Oh, how was it not being there?" I don't know. I just mentally I made that decision and that's it. There's no there's mm -hmm. no looking back. So I made that decision and now I'm just working on improving, you know. I know what I need to do and what what I need to improve on, you know. And um seeing seeing the top guys how much they improved, like I you know, well, I'm sure we'll You saw that Bumstead picture? Absolutely, yeah. man. My hat goes off to Fucking Chris. insane. <laughs> it's, listen, at this level, when you have that much muscularity and it's not your first or second year training, to make that much of an improvement's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, and Chris has battled his own health health issues in the past. What, Truly, do you, what do you have, kidney issues? He had some kidney issues, yeah. which it was, you know, you hear that as a bodybuilder and immediately people make assumptions. It was autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. okay. He has some autoimmune diseases, uh, you know, is... Is it directly correlated to bodybuilding? I don't think so. But of course, bodybuilding, what we put our bodies through, affects it affects everything, you know? Right. So it can make a pre-existing condition worse, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he improved a ton. Breon got bigger, rough came up, and it's like, how are you gonna hang with that if you can't improve? Mm -hmm. You know, do I think I have a physique that what it takes to be in the top top spots? Absolutely, I was there before, but I need to improve on it. I I, I know what I need to, to fix and to grow and to bring up or to bring down. And I didn't feel I was in the position to be able to do that. So oh, when I really started doing more and more cardio, that's when it started really bothering me. So I was having like pretty good leg workouts. I was working mm -hmm. around the hip and the TFLs hurt, but like 30, 40 minutes into the workout, I'd be good. And my training partners would start fatiguing and I'd start getting <laughs> stronger. But then once I started doing the cardio, it was a wrap. The, I have a spin bike at home, and that's what I've been doing for like a year and a half. Done. I cannot do a spin bike anymore. So I've been walking mm. on the stairs. Okay. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, you're not mm. a Stairmaster guy. At least for my... I, I am now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I you have to be. I never saw you yeah. on a Stairmaster. That's kind of crazy yeah. to see. Your cardio now would be uh, jumping into the low rep, the uh, higher rep that we were just talking about. Yeah, right? <laughs> 40, but, um, 50 reps. Yeah. But I just I kept prepping. I kept dieting, you know, to stay in shape. Um I don't really want to get too much bigger. I like to stay in, in shape, and I can't really grow that much to have a crazy off-season. But, you know, I just want to stay in shape and look good. And so I kept on dieting and prepping. Now slowly I'll start eating a little bit more and try to grow in the, in the right areas. But that's another thing, man. It's really tough. Like, I'm, I'm not high in body fat right now. I'm fairly lean. And I'm sitting over 230. So well, what what do you nice. what do you have? Yeah, right. <laughs> what do you have to um? What do you have? What do you have to improve? What what's been the <clears throat> what's been the uh, feedback from judges? And what have you seen that you need to bring up? So 100 percent with you know I'm very unbiased. Like I see myself very un tr very transparent. You yeah. know, and from the outside in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. my outer quads need to come out. Need to bow out. And that IT band TFL issue, it's so wound up there. I think that's affecting the fascia and not allowing it. Obviously, it's affecting mm -hmm. my training, but it's keeping my legs, like my quads from bowing out. So I, I need more quad sweep, and I need to build my lower back, my lower back thickness, okay. and just get mm -hmm. wider. And those two things happen, it's going to make my waist look a lot smaller. Um, my waist right now, like I posted a few things on Instagram in my, you know, off-season weight, like 235, 240, pulling a vacuum. I've worked on my waist a lot. I'm eating smaller meals. My stomach has shrunken for sure. So at this weight right now, it was never looked this small. So I'm confident that my waist is going to be a lot smaller. And then if those two areas come up, it'll even look smaller. Cool. But the thing that's mm -hmm. happened, like if you guys see last year, I think was one of my best packages and it was my worst placing. So when I say it was like my best package, I looked the best the week going in. At prejudging that morning, no, I didn't deserve better than I got. I didn't look right. Are you still with Andrew? I am. Okay. So it's really, really hard to make that weight and then go back up. I need to be around that weight a week or two weeks out, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm 225. Well, you hold crazy water every, every time you fly, too. I, I do, but like this year, I was dry and like very vascular mm -hmm. and shredded at 225. So we're talking about 10 pounds when you're already dry and you're not losing body fat in, in you know, 24 hours for yeah. weight. Yeah. 
Unless you go to Hawks Gym. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's for another that's for another podcast. Yeah, but you lose entirely. you lose the body fat, but the cortisol raises. Oh man. <laughs> you know, the water. Your viewers don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, they do. They they, they remember do? from the first one. They remember? Oh, oh yeah. they do. Oh, we don't forget Hawks yeah. Gym. That was a that I, I forgot about that. You just brought back some scary memories. The amount of people that message me like, yo, Hawks, Hawks. Really? Yeah. If you Hysterical. Google it, it comes up, man. How are the how they doing in quarantine? What do you think? Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't want to know. They miss you. That's crazy. <laughs> that was really, really crazy. Mm. I almost didn't make the way in that. That was a 2000, that was six, seven, 17, 17, I think it was. I think it was six, 16. 16 or 17. I, so. I wasn't mm. there. 17 was I there? No, I was there 18. Yeah, that's No, crazy. no, no. Mm. I was there 17, so it was the year before. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> Memories. Fucking Hawks Gym, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, well, we fucked him up. <laughs> Dude. Dude, that was a traumatic... Traumatic weight dropping experience. <laughs> like, absolutely. Get him out of there. Hurry up. <laughs> so that year, I think the weigh in was 205, but it went up to 210. Now it's 215. So I, I make this weight, and then, you know, you rehydrate and carb up, and the weight doesn't go back exactly where you pulled it from. So the whole point of me bringing this up was, you know, I don't look the same. I don't look as good. I, you know, maybe look a little soft or flat. And also, like you see the pictures of me a week out, or even in California, I was pulling a vacuum, and my waist looked really small. Mm. And then once we rehydrate, whatever the case happens, I don't look like that anymore. And I have a hard time with my midsection, and I can't pull the vacuum on stage. So I've never successfully pulled the vacuum that I'm able to pull in pictures and videos that I post up on stage. Mm -hmm. And um, pulling that kind of weight off you and then trying to put it back. I don't go crazy with carbo, but you have to rehydrate. You're completely mm -hmm. dehydrated. You can't even think straight, you yeah. know? Yeah. It doesn't go to the same places. And I believe that you end up kind of retaining in the midsection. Mm -hmm. it's tough man it, it's 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 a fight whatever you yeah. you know and and some people are able to just kind of nail i guess nail it right off the bat and right off the cusp listen i know when when casey was still competing i was with meadows shooting at uh the new york pro it was when it was at westchester it wasn't in new york anymore which yeah. is horrible but yeah. um yeah and i remember uh meadows looking at casey and just try because it was his first like first or second show with casey just trying to fill him out He's like, I got to, you know, push more food. You're burning through the food, so we got to keep putting. It's amazing to see how every single person's different. And then his other guy, Arturo, the uh, Spanish dude from uh, Puerto Rico, he was just like, everything he ate, he just like sucked up and it looked it, it instantly. Like, mm -hmm. there you go. This is what he looks like. Yeah. So it's just, it's very interesting to see the science behind it. And I think Andrew's done a great job with you. I, I still think your best showing that I saw, besides the California, uh, you look great at the California one, but the Arnold. That Arnold, Arnold oh, that yeah. year. Yeah, that was with Justin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we... we uh, no, you looked... I, you, the, the day of the... Was that with Justin? Yeah. Okay. I was conditioned and sharp, but I was a little on the flat side. We were talking about having more, taking in more water, mm -hmm. um, and we were both a little bit worried, so we didn't, but I would have been fuller. That was the first time I ever had carbs prior to weigh-in. I don't want to get into too much detail, but mm -hmm. believe it or not, mm -hmm. all the other shows I did... In 2016, when I won and I got second, I would, I would be carb depleted and I would only eat carbs after weigh-in, which in retrospect, it's not the smartest thing to do because your glycogen levels take a long time to fill back up. And you're not mm -hmm. necessarily going to be heavy if you carb up. So in the, it, in the few, I've, I did this with the California shows and I didn't really love the way I looked in the Cali shows, by the way, but that was the first time I had carbs for several days prior to weigh-in. Gotcha. And I think mm -hmm. that's a smart way of doing it. It's kind of, you can think of it as carb backloading, but... You know, if you have carbohydrates prior, your glycogen stores aren't fully depleted. When you, mm -hmm. when you dehydrate with glycogen stores fully depleted, the likelihood of you carbing up successfully is slim to none because a dehydrated muscle is not going to uptake glucose glycogen. Mm -hmm. So it's like... How long after would it... I guess it would take like a day or two, right? You know, if you're fully, fully carb depleted and you're dehydrated, it's going to take like... To full, fit, truly fill out a full entire uh, uh, muscular physique, max, it's going to th take three days. In mm -hmm. one day, you can make a big change, but like two, two and a half days. So ideally, like if you have to cut water and you have to dehydrate to make weight, ideally you want to have some carbs, not like a thousand grams of carbs for four days, but you want to have carbs so your glycogen stores are maybe 
40%, maybe 60%. Mm -hmm. And you go into whey and not fully glycogen depleted. So then after whey and what you really focus on is rehydrating. But then you can't rehydrate and carb up at the same time. Because carbs hold water. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really tricky. It's very like uh, you could do a little bit of this and a little bit of that yeah. and just, mm -hmm. just kind of see what happens with you. Yeah. And the carb back, I mean, you could call it carb backloading. It sounds more fancy. But like if the Saturday show carbing up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then easing back, it's mm -hmm. a little bit safer because if you do have too much or you spill over, you can get rid of it. You can go work out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with carbs, if you don't use it, you don't lose it. So if you were to eat a bunch of carbs today, and, huh. you, didn't, and you didn't train, <laughs> you know, I already did. <laughs> Too late. <Yeah. laughs> and you didn't train today, and you don't train tomorrow. Well, today's Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday, you're going to have glycogen in your muscles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't use it, you don't lose it. So like, if you were to carb up slowly a week out, you're not going to be flat and de depleted on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it's good. Listen, it's good to go on stage with the muscles full, but the stomach empty. Yeah. yeah. You know, A lot of guys are eating, eating the morning and the night before the show tons of food and red meat and stuff and just sits in the gut and if you're dehydrated shit you're it's and you're con and you're constipated more than likely yeah, so you're, it's not yeah. coming out of you you're either. dehydrated it's not it's not going oh, anywhere oh my yeah. god i remember my show man holy shit <laughs> it was like rabbit pellets i couldn't i was like when is this gonna get back to normal because i am so miserable Dude, right it's now it's rough man <laughs> They, the people, the, people really don't understand like that have never competed at yeah. least once. Mm -hmm. They really don't understand how much goes into this. Not only like the preparation going into it, but like what you deal with after. I mean, you you stay pretty tight after shows. You did a good job too. You yep. did, I didn't do a good job. Second show, I did a better job. But mm -hmm. well, I didn't either. My first show. Yeah, me either. When I, I when everything. I competed in 2014 as an amateur. Yeah. You know, I learned from that in the first like year or two. Not even even after I turned probably when I when I was turning pro. Everyone makes that mistake. You go off and you eat, and it's really easy to come off the diet, and you end up getting depressed and you look like crap, and it's Ooh. not healthy mm -hmm. either because you retain so much water. So bad. So I learned from that, and I was like, you know what, man, I don't want to do this anymore. So now I'm like very strict. I'll change my diet on joy, but I keep doing fasted cardio and I keep on the diet. Like you can't have that mentality of in four days the diet's over. You can't that have was, that. That was my entire yeah. mentality. Yeah. And, and another tip, don't go and buy a bunch of shit. Like my <laughs> first show, <laughs> I had like boxes of cereal. I had these cookies from Costco. I had all this stuff lined up. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do if it's that you're going to eat it? Yeah. yeah. So I just say, listen, like people are like, what are you going to have after that? I have no idea. A beer. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he's yeah. like, I just, want, I just want a beer. He's yeah. like, that's that's how you told me at the Olympia. Yeah. I just want a beer. So like the last two Olympias, believe it or not, I didn't, I didn't have a... I didn't have anything. I didn't have cheat meals mm -hmm. or anything. I think I had like a salad. I went back to my room and I enjoyed it. It was but good. You usually have shoots yeah. after the next day anyway. Yeah. And then I have something planned. Like I, I, I like to like enjoy myself. And, but if you have one and then two and you just lose, oh. they go out of control. Mm -hmm. and I ate a full jar of peanut butter. I was a disgusting uh, slob. I was like laying there with a, I looked like Jabba the Hutt. I was just, <laughs> anything I could get my hands and mouth on. I was just yeah. like, you eat, know ate what? Everything. I, I have the protein pancakes that I've told you about. Yeah. I have them mm -hmm. almost every night as a meal. It's like egg whites, protein. I have it on my YouTube, on my Instagram. They're incredible. In the Cali show with, um, with Maria, what we had after the show, we went back to the room and we had the protein pancakes, but we had like a lot more nut butter on it. Yeah. yeah. And there was a couple other things. That it, was, it was incredible. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. You added all the fun stuff to it. Yeah, yeah. Man, I just know I wanted my freedom back. Like if I wanted a cup of coffee with milk and sugar, I could have it. Yeah. I was looking forward to that. Where, you know. You know, I, I, some, some people just genetically are just ripped. They walk around ripped all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot of bodybuilders that were just, uh, ectomorph, skinny and lean before they started. So they just always go back to that. Like mm -hmm. they stop eating so much, all of a sudden they lose weight. That's not me. I, you know, in a good way, it's good because I put on a lot of size. I was able to put on a lot of size. I still am. I can grow really easily. I'm this weight at like 100 grams of carbs. Mm -hmm. But I have to work to stay fairly lean or even in this condition. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not just eating whatever I want. I'm doing fasted cardio mm -hmm. right now and I'm on a strict diet. So... It was very frustrating, and it took me 20 years to like really get to the point where it's like, all right, man, this is what it is. I always have to be watching what I'm I eat all point. the time. Yeah. yeah. When I was younger, I followed Dorian and Ronnie. I studied them, and I mimicked them. I even ate grits because of Ronnie. And I was just like, I don't understand. I'm eating clean, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but I was eating a ton of food. I'm not eating bad. I'm training my ass off. Why don't I have any vascularity? Why am I so soft and bloated? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it took a long time to get to the realization where it's like, hey, man, this is, you can't do what he's doing. It's, yeah, it's everybody's it's different. different. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you this. Um, so now you say you're doing fasted cardio. Yeah. So 
are you getting ready for something or is it just to keep men and maintain? Just keep and maintain. Um, you know, I'm working on my app that's going to come out soon. So mm. filming for that. A Rosh, a Rosh Rabar app, send a check. <laughs> <laughs> and just being as OCD as I am, it's like taking forever because I don't want it to be BS. You know, I, yeah, I mm. want it to be real. Like I, it took me like a while to put the, the programs together because I have... You know, I've done a lot of studying and like the university studies, the medical research, like I have all that. And then I have the 27 years of my own experience for myself and also the past like 10 years of clients. And I know what works, but I also know what a lot of people are willing to do and what aren't. So I put together three really cool programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about like hypertrophy and the low volume versus the high volume. And unfortunately, there's so many misconceptions in bodybuilding and in fitness that what is the best way to train? What is the best way to do cardio? And people just don't get it. They're like, no, no, this is the best way. And that's the best way. And uh, yeah, low, low reps or high reps or, yeah, or yeah. drop sets or uh, they all work. Yeah. They all mm -hmm. work. It's and they not, serve their purpose. Absolutely. It's not what you do in bodybuilding and in life. Right. It's how you do it. So as long as you're is the sets are difficult, and as long as you're pushing yourself to close to failure, you know, mm -hmm. uh, reps in reserve, IRR, I, RIR, uh, two reps, three reps, or one rep to failure, or even going to failure on a few sets throughout mm -hmm. the workout, that's what matters. You know, you can build the same amount of muscle going lighter with higher reps than you could going heavier with lower reps. You're going to get muscle hypertrophy. It's going to lead to that. Mm -hmm. The body will adapt once you push it to that, to that limit, you know? But uh, you just see a lot of guys in the gym going eight, nine, ten, and they put yeah. the weight down. You're like, why'd you stop? Like, because yeah. that set was supposed to be ten reps. Yeah, but you didn't fail at ten. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. stopped at ten, and that doesn't lead to growth. Your body, your biceps don't know what number you're up to. It knows how much pain it's in. Ex exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You that's, can't why, count. that's why I like the. I, I, you know, you know me. I'm I'm a Meadows junkie. Yeah. I like I like his program that I'm on now. It's called the Beyonder, and it, it incorporates mm -hmm. a lot of uh, rest pauses, drop sets. ISO holds, but it's like different for each workout. And he takes direct arm training out because you're doing a bunch of row sets and you don't maybe not, don't need to hit arms that week. And you can do you can add it as an accessory workout towards the end, but it's supposed to be light. And just that manipulation and ability to kind of do that. And then his other program, which I do, which is the 16 week one, which I told you about, I'm just like dead yeah. after mm -hmm. I, I'm done with 16 weeks on that, is um, uh, blocked off workouts. So like, the first four weeks, you focus on uh, chest. The next four weeks, you focus on back. The next one, you focus on shoulders and legs. And, and, and basically, within each set of four weeks, you're focusing on one muscle group as the high intensity. Yeah. So it's like two to three workouts of back that week. And then the leg block is fucking horrific. <laughs> The worst that, in the world. You know, that definitely works because when people are like just trying to grow every single muscle, well, mm -hmm. look, if you're, if you're sleeping like 10, 12 hours and you're eating perfect every two to three hours, yeah, it's possible you could work on more muscle, want more than one muscle, have the focus. But for mm -hmm. the most part, if you're training hard and it's training is very stressful and catabolic on the body, it's going to be hard to grow a lot of muscle. So putting one focus on one mm -hmm. muscle mm -hmm. for several weeks is smart. But also that, that style of what Meadows does with all the different intensity techniques is great because... Well, you I don't want to cut you off, but you experienced that firsthand. Absolutely, on yeah. that on, on the <laughs> yeah. pendulum squat. Yeah, my goodness, I've never seen somebody in so much. You, Casey, uh, like yeah, we did a whole <laughs> leg workout. Me, Casey, it's on and, YouTube. And Meadows, if anybody yeah. wants to go see mm -hmm. it, if they haven't, it was a great workout. Yeah. yeah, that was insane. I'm a big fan of John. I like him very much as his knowledge and also as a person. He's a great mm -hmm. guy. I've been following John and watching his videos before I was even ever stepped on stage, you know, like um, his pre-workout was always cream of rice and nut butter and protein powder. Uh, what does he call it? He calls it, um, oh God, he calls <laughs> it, uh, it's going to come to me out of nowhere. I even remember he was wearing a, like a superhero on his t-shirt when he made that video. Probably. It's a long time <laughs> ago. He wears, he wears a pink unicorn t-shirt too. All yeah, the time. I've seen that one. It's hysterical. Yeah. But the, the, the different intensity techniques, what I was saying in his program. The RPEs. Good. Yeah, it's good because you don't – sometimes you give someone a program, it's really basic old school, like we were talking mm -hmm. about, like Dorian Yates. You give someone that program, you're relying on them giving 110%. If they mm -hmm. don't, that shit won't work. Not at all. It's not enough not at volume. All. It won't work. But – the, the, the what would you call it? The R? RPEs, he calls it. RPEs, mm -hmm. I forget you what know, it they're I'm hard. Right now. So as long as somebody's following them to <clears throat> even 60%, mm -hmm. they're going to they're gonna fatigue and they're going to burn. They're going to have a hard time. Yeah. So I think that's that's why it's good. A lot of people, you give them programs and like 
my clients, I'll write up their program based on their goal and based on what they look like and what they're doing now. I don't just mm -hmm. make a program. So I'll say, what is your program now? Let me see what you mm -hmm. look like and what you want to accomplish. And then I'll make their program based on their pictures and on what they're doing now. But then I'll send them a voice note or an explanation, like mm -hmm. explaining how I want you to perform in the gym. You know, right. if, if you don't feel like you got hit by a truck, if you're walking out of your workout and someone's asking you, hey, did you just get here? Are you done? Like, yeah. you know, th there's a problem, you know, you mm -hmm. should be like carrying yourself out of the gym. And I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you need to apply yourself. People don't train. They think just because I'm eating the six meals and I'm showing up at the gym, I'm going to start growing and getting shredded. And that's not the case. If you mm -hmm. show up at work, but you don't work your ass off, are you going to get paid? <laughs> no. No. You know? So I'm looking at the bottom of uh, the Taskmaster program, which is uh, that 16-week program. So the RPE stands for the Rate of Perceived Exertion mm -hmm. for Flowchart. So it basically goes from um, a number 6.0, so 6.0 all the way up to 13. And it starts at fairly easy, like a warm-up. And then it goes to you can do four to six more reps. Then it goes you can do two to three more reps. And then the next one is you have two more reps left in the tank. You have one more rep left in the tank. You went to failure at perfect form. You went to failure with loose form after perfect reps completed. You used a high intensity technique to push beyond failure, or you, and the highest one, which is 13, is you use multiple high intensity techniques slash going ape shit. <laughs> I think you need a college degree just to follow that. that yeah. was, you lost me in the second one. It's wild. I mean, yeah. when you're, because when you're looking at his workouts, so like, especially on this one, you know, I'll show you. So like when you're looking at his workouts, um, one of the hardest things about, um, really writing a program for somebody online like that is really dealing with the human percent error where what you think is 100% intensity right now once you're training for three or four years you realize what you used to think was 100% isn't even close to what you can give yeah you know so you keep building that threshold up absolutely I mean so like right here I, before you start yeah, yeah, yeah so like at the bottom of this back workout like one of the first sets was a, is a Meadows row we're kicking it off with you know this uh, 10 reps till you reach your top end weight. Uh, these sets are all RPE, 9 to 10, likely to be 10. So then, like, if you have to refer back to the chart to understand, it's like, okay, so 10 is, you had some in the, t like, one or two left in the tank, except for the last one where he goes, that should be 12. Yeah. So, it, listen, it's in depth, but he takes a lot of time, like you are, mm -hmm. he takes a lot of time to write these programs down. And like you said, if you're going to do them, you do them. Yeah. Like, I've given them out to people, like, a one, wor one workout thing, and they go, oh, made such a difference. I'm like, yeah, like I, I watched you though in the corner and you were exactly doing what you just said. Like you hit 10 reps and you just like dropped the weight and you were like, yeah, yeah I'm good. It's like, there was no exertion. There was no, I'm literally going to die. Like there was none of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to see how different people train or they say they train. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure you come across most, that a lot. That's why most people in the gym look the same, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. a member of this gym and they see the same people doing the same stuff. You see people, there's always a, a handful of men and women that run on the treadmill every day for like 45 minutes and they all look the same. Why? You mm -hmm. know? So yeah, you, like you were saying, you have to push your boundaries. The body will adapt. Mm -hmm. You have to push it. Yeah, that's why I like um, my little old school method of writing everything down. I have a stack of fucking books at home since I was like 16. I've written every workout down. Yeah. And um, I know like last week, because I do roughly the same exercises every week. But I know shit that I do 135 pounds for 10 reps or 12 that I do, you know, this for this, whatever it happens to be. And I'll make a little asterisk in there going, you know, real light or didn't sleep well, whatever it happens to be. If there's a weight increase, I have one of those colored pens because I'm a fucking third grader. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll put a little W in there in red like, all right, the weight went up. Yeah. But so I can understand what 100% intensity for me for that set was last week. So I know with this new week, I need to at least maintain that and try to increase something else within that workout. Yeah, I mean, it's, listen, it's tough to have the notepad and do that, but mm -hmm. just doing that will make you stronger. Yeah. With all other variables being the same, just knowing that, hey, I did the 130s that last week and I have to do, again, the 130s for 10, which I did last week, yeah. or 130s for 11 or 135s for 8 to 10. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just knowing that mentally will make you stronger. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that how mental this sport really is, and you can literally push your body physically with no other changes, but just, just mental 
attitude. You know, I remember seeing Kevin Lavrone shrugging like six or seven plates on each side. Mm. Nothing changed. I didn't take creatine. I, I didn't take any more creatine. I was taking creatine. But yeah. just watching that video, I mimicked it mentally and I, I was rehearsing it in my head and I went up like three plates. Mm -hmm. I added like two or three plates on each side, you know? Sean Ray, I mimicked his seated row. Ronnie mimicked everything. And I got stronger mm -hmm. and stronger and stronger. I used to watch, rehearse, and study those videos. Um, I owned Unbelievable. I owned and still own Blood and Guts. And I used to watch these videos and mimic these guys. Mm -hmm. And that was a big part of my training was preparing for the training, watching those videos, rehearsing them in my head, and envisioning myself doing it. And I remember even the way I'd look in the gym and what I'd wear was a huge factor. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to feel, and I wanted to feel stronger and bigger. So I did whatever it took to look bigger. I would get big baggy shirts. I would buy huge things or big, big shirts and wear the, the belt and just make myself look more like yeah. Hashtag classic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. And it, it, make, it made me feel a certain way. Well, it put you thus, in that mood. It put you in that absolutely, mode. Absolutely, like, yeah. And that's that mode that we've spoken about with a lot of guys from Bez that come in here. Not only is it like the attire that kind of sets you in the mood, the music. Like, I mean, how many times do you listen to Blood and Guts when you work out? All the time. Yeah, do you mm -hmm. just listen to yeah. them screaming and yelling and it just motivates you to do more? But like walking into Bev's is a different feeling than walking into an LA Fitness. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, the... A lot of people that don't go to this gym don't understand that engulfing feeling of, well, I'm here. It's time to fuck shit up and just get it, get it going. Yeah. Like, dude, today, my, my workouts are short now. Like, I, I can't mm -hmm. stay there that long. I can't two, three hour workouts I used to do. I can't do it anymore. Like, it's just, it's too much. I was there for maybe 47 minutes. Finished the entire Meadows workout. Yeah. Everything. Just mm -hmm. blasted through it. Low, low rest. Just get right to it. Do my thing. You know, I start getting, I start dieting again in like a week just to get ready for my, my cousin's bachelor party. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just trying to get as much workout as I can going. But like right when you walk into that door, it, it could be like the shittiest day in the world. You just, you feel that, all right, I'm here to get this job done. Like it's time to put yeah. the head down, get to work. Mm -hmm. Anytime a workout should be taking more than 45 minutes to an hour is if you're lifting very, very heavy, low volume, and you're taking three plus minute breaks, you know, yeah. usually like two to three minutes, even up to five minutes. But like studies have shown that you don't really recover that much more past three minutes. But mm -hmm. it sounds like a lot, but it goes by quick when you're lifting brutally heavy for that low volume, heavy weight, you need mm -hmm. two to three minutes. And recovering with the mask on is horrendous. Oh, forget mm -hmm. about it. There's you don't recover. Yeah. Well, the other yeah. thing is, uh, since September, I know we haven't like spoken about supplement was and whatnot i stopped caffeine so i haven't had any caffeine since september yeah and that's been a challenge <laughs> yeah i stopped too i i get off i stopped taking caffeine uh several times throughout the year mm -hmm. i love my coffee but i just like cut I it do out too, yeah. It's, it, yeah i think that was exacerbating the vertigo for me yeah it was, it was causing sure. more issues more nervous i'll tell you that i i've said it a couple times um those withdrawals were fucking crazy yeah the sh i was sh a couple of shoots i was on shoots that were like a breeze i would never have any nerves for like shaking in my car yeah, that low blood sugar feeling mm -hmm. it was it's wild yeah. I, I i didn't know what to like i was just like yo you gotta like chill the fuck out dude like you're good you know what i do when i have like a taste for because i love coffee i'll do unsweetened almond milk like a cup mm -hmm. and then i'll do water believe it or not stevia tiny amount of salt and then i'll top it off with a little bit of like decaf coffee mm -hmm. and it gives you that that feel and that taste nice and hot it's yeah. really good that's all. You got that's all the, he's good. got all the tips. Every time I was filming uh, food videos for him, you know, he, he finished filming. He'd be like, oh, come on, fuck, eat. I can't eat it. I'm in prep. Eat, <laughs> eat up. Come on, man. What are you doing? Like, I eat. have so we many. We got 10 more dishes going on. Yeah, he's like, yo, we got three more dishes. Come on, eat. Go. So many little tricks and stuff. Like we were mm -hmm. talking about food before. You had a hard time getting the food down when you're yeah. eating a lot. But you were eating a ton. You were bulking. Yeah. I, I just, I'm a fat kid at heart, so I love eating. But mm -hmm. none of my meals taste bad. Like people are like, oh, you bodybuild. Your oh. food is like gross I, like a lot of the times believe it or not i don't even season it it's just chicken and rice or whatever i'd put the pink salt it tastes incredible mm -hmm. salt is the key like people don't realize this like if you take salt out of food it tastes like crap all desserts and pastries you have that has salt if you just have put the sugar in there and no salt it doesn't taste good and you mm -hmm. do the himalayan pink sea yeah. salt yeah you, do you like it coarse or do you like it thin i like as the thin as, I, I like the coarse ones well, i like, I like it's a little hard to measure them you know, it's yeah. hard to measure it. So I, I, I buy it already ground pretty, pretty uh, fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then I use a quarter teaspoon, but it's like double the salt of regular white salt. So regular white salt is in like the 250, 
250 milligram per quarter teaspoon, mm -hmm. and Himalayan is 500, give or take, 450 to 550, depending on the brand you get and how coarse or fine it is. So it's a lot more sodium, you have to keep that in mind, but mm -hmm. the key with sodium and water is consistency. Mm -hmm. People think so you get bloated from sodium. No, you get bloated from a lack of sodium. Mm -hmm. If sodium and water is consistent, or if you double your sodium, for instance, and you do get bloated, you ride it out for a few days, the body balances out, because it has sodium pumps. So the sodium pumps say, oh, there's too much sodium here, they start working, and they start pumping it out, pumping out the extra water. And that's actually a, um, a strategy of bodybuilders for years. They increase sodium and water going into a show, and they create a natural diuretic state called diuresis. It's the human body just basically flushing out. Yeah, I think that's what I, think that's what I had done. I had, um, I, water, I water loaded. I did, like the, the days leading up to it, shockingly, I was, I was drinking three gallons of water a day. Dude, that's mm -hmm. rough. It was disgusting. Yeah. Like, I, dude, I can't get a gallon down now. You can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. I was, mm -hmm. and this is when I was at, I was at Koya yeah. College. I was just, I was pissing in class every three minutes. Yeah. I was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Like every four minutes, I was like raising mm -hmm. my hand to go to the bathroom. But I was drinking three gallons. Uh, and if I drank less, I felt like shit. Like yeah. I, it was almost like that. I needed that because it was filling my stomach because of my lack of food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was drinking that much. And then we started, he's like, well, if you could drink three and a half gallons, drink three and a half gallons going. I'm like, I, you can go fuck yourself. I'm, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I don't know if I, you know, for those that are listening, <laughs> yeah, that's you, well, 24 pounds of water. Well, right yeah. There. Well, just, just understand like the coach that I was with at the time. We all know at this table who I was with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I. But anyway, so I, I, I drank like three and a half for like a day, and then we started tapering me off to like, now you drink two gallons, now you drink a gallon and a half, now you drink one, now you have half a gallon the day, a couple days before the show, and now you have yeah. like, you're allowed like a teaspoon, it was like fucking like yeah, half a bottle. Yeah, dehydration's a, yeah. a bitch. I, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted the right human, stage. The human body will hold whatever it doesn't get, and it'll release whatever it gets. So the whole theory is you give it a ton of water, it... It's hydrated, so it pisses it all out. If you were put in the desert right now, if someone put you in a desert with no water, you're, after it's a little bit of sweat, one or two pisses, your body catches on. It's like, oh shit, we're getting dehydrated. That's it. It starts holding water, and you'll stop sweating. Mm -hmm. You'll hold water, and you'll bloat. So you give it tons of water, and you give it consistent salt, and it'll actually give you a drier, harder look. Mm -hmm. Salt is not the enemy. Everyone thinks it's the enemy. Without sodium, your muscles won't have pressure. Well, that's that's a whole that's yeah. a pump. Yeah. That's really that's what a people pump. like. I mean, I, I know people that would take beetroot and they would take a, a, a tablespoon of salt, and that would be their pre workout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People always used to say kosher pickles one of the best pre works. Half half the time when people have cheat meals and they have like the best workout the next day, was the it sodium, the carbs the and carbs. the calories? Yeah, possibly, but the carbs might be like four times the amount of carbs you're normally eating. But the sodium is like 30 times. The sodium mm. in one cheat meal is the same amount as some competitors whole entire week. <laughs> you know, like I take in, I take in a thousand per meal. So I take in like five, 6,000 milligrams of sodium a day. Mm -hmm. But what's a cheat meal? What's a burger and fries? Like, it's, I don't know, 10,000 milligrams. Nobody knows. I can look it up. Depends. I guess it depends where you eat, but it's high. Yeah. I, got the, I got the Google machine. Hold on one second. How thirsty do you get after your cheat meals? Entirely. Right? And then, but yeah. then you don't want to drink because your stomach's stuffed. I don't drink. You know, like yeah. I, I limit the fluid that I have mm -hmm. whenever I eat huge meals, carb meals, or cheat meals. So, like, I love Diet Coke, but I don't, I cut it out years ago because, yeah. you know, the, it's just not healthy for you. But if I have a burger and fries and I really want a Diet Coke, I'll have it, but I'll just sip on it a little bit. And then after, like, I'll drink on cheat meals, I'll drink mm -hmm. my gallon, gallon and a half before the cheat meal. And then, 20, 30 minutes before, I won't have anything, and I'll try to drink very little. But I always wake up in the middle of the night really thirsty. Yeah. And that'll, that'll make or break how I look in the morning. <clears throat> if I limit it for, like, the second half of the day, I'll wake up hard and dry and, like, look crazy. But if mm -hmm. I drink a ton throughout the cheat meal and throughout the night, I'll retain water. Yeah. So in an average fast food single patty, which we all know Nobody we're not having a that. single fucking patty. Yeah. In a single patty plain hamburger, uh, that contains 378 milligrams of sodium. So that's 16% of the daily 2,300 yeah. milligram limit. That's, that's still pretty low. However, additional sodium sources in a burger, uh, if you add a tablespoon of ketchup, you'll increase the sodium content by 167 milligrams. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so and then a tablespoon of mustard adds 168. And mayonnaise is actually 105. So maybe for a fat. double patty in the normal place we go to, maybe 1,000 milligrams of sodium. But then you got the fries and a lot of people have Cheese is 350, yeah. a slice. Probably 1,000. It's not, yeah, it's not that high, but 
Depends what you're eating, you know? Mm -hmm. So the entire burger with all the fixings is, is around uh, 1,100 milligrams of sodium, which is 43% of that 2,300 <laughs> milligram limit. Yeah. Uh, I saw it with um, a Chipotle, where I think you legally, if it's like a ludicrous amount of sodium, you have to put like a little salt shake or something next to it where they have to say the calories. Yeah. Like, hey, there's a lot of salt in here. Yeah. If you ever go to Chipotle, look at... Um, the menu on top. Everything. Oh, really? Everything. Every single thing listed has the salt icon, meaning wow. it's that one meal is higher than your recommended daily value of sodium. Jeez. Yeah, man. Things don't taste good without salt. Mm -hmm. you know? I had pizza this past weekend. Truffle oil pizza. It's yes. One of my, it's the best pizza Where'd I've you ever get had that? in my life. Cipollini. Oh, yeah. I get three pies. Maria eats about one. They're small, though. They're <laughs> yeah, like little yeah. Personal, they're personal pies. I guess they're like six slices. They like people order them for appetizer, but I have like yeah. two of the pies, and it's it's um, incredible that truffle mm. oil. Mm. Yeah, I had. What did I have the other day? I've, I've been playing handball again, so like that's been my cardio. Yeah. So we play for like three hours. That's a hell of cardio, dude. I, I burned like twenty five hundred calories. It's insane. Yeah. But I ordered what the fuck did I order? I ordered a smash burger. I ordered a double. Swiss and and mushroom burger. It's good. We never ate there. Yeah, with um truffle mayo. Really? And the fries they have are rosemary and sea salt tossed fries. Seriously? <clears throat> Fire. Fancy. Fire. Is it better than Shake Shack? <sighs> it's different. I'm a Shit, Five yeah. Guys guy. And I'm then not I, a Five Guys I guy. Went why, to don't like five guys. why don't I like we pro guys. guys like Five Guys? Okay, so five, I love Five Guys burger. It's just I like sm thin, greasy patties, which mm -hmm. both of these other places are too. Yeah. Five Guys fries suck unless you tell them light on the salt and really well done. Pro tip. If not, if not, they're just like mushy. You heard it here first yeah. on the Voice and Rizzles. <laughs> so after, after, how, how a Rosh Ravar eats his fries. <laughs> so after, after months of doing Five Guys and just being too nervous to go anywhere else, I tried Shake Shack, and it was great. Oh, Shake Shack's the, delicious. The, the crinkle fries are really good. The burgers are a little bit smaller. They're really good. But I've never been to Smash Burger. Smash Burger's really good. That was actually my first time. I, I had to order it at 9, 9 o'clock because I knew they were going to close by 9.30. Mm -hmm. And we had, we've been playing indoor handball, so we had the court reserved from like 9 to 10.30, 10 o'clock. Uh, so I had it delivered. It was cold when I got to it, but that shit was great. Yeah, I like that one. There's another spot that I actually saw. Aaron Lohman, um, huge fat loser, the homie. All American? Uh, no, fuck. <laughs> All American. I've heard of that. that place great. It's, it's, a hidden, it's a hidden little gem in uh, yeah. Mass people. It's okay. It's been around there for decades. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, forever. It's, it's a it's a staple on Long Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a good spot. But there's a place called uh, Local in Bayshore. You ever heard of that one? I've heard of it. Never they been got there. like little Shake Shack burgers too. They almost look like a small chain Shake Shack. So it's like just their own solo, solo store. It's like they're doing their take on that burger. Yeah. I'm still waiting for uh, In N Out. In N Out was fantastic. I had In N Out uh, when we went to Cali for the dark shoot. It wasn't that great. What? The fries were terrible. Burger was okay. You had a bad experience. I, I, yeah. Dude, when I was in Vegas. I lived in Cali years ago. I used to go there. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what was a good burger place that we don't have in New York? It's in like Connecticut, New Jersey. It's called Habit. And uh, my friends always told me about it. When I went to California, we had it out there. It was incredible. And they have sweet potato fries, too, which I'm a big fan of. That was a good. Well, if, I mean, if you're looking for stuff like that, um, I'm not a burgerology guy. But uh, New York Burger Bar in Massapequa is great, too. They're great. Yeah. Great. They have sweet potato fries with, like, marshmallow dipping sauce. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone has that. Now. Yeah. That's, like that, that's fire. And yeah. they have the poutine, well, which is You know, is like, fire. burgerology, I had it. It was great. But, like, these, these burger places that have, like, nice, big, thick burgers, I don't want that. I want, like, a thin, greasy, shit fast food burger. You know what I mean? <laughs> then, that's, then all American is all you. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Oh, for sure. All right, we gotta, we're, we're, not the, we're the food network now, people. Yeah, yeah that's what it. What the hell are you guys talking about? All right, every <laughs> single place that we mentioned, send the check later. John will, John will cash them in. We're going we're gonna to keep plugging you We're going out to eat. We're going out to eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to mention the, uh, the, the Roslyn Social Burger. Roslyn Social, with right the down the street. With the truffle fries. Uh, truffle is my favorite. What? Siri? Even Siri wants the burger. <laughs> oh, now she's singing to us. What is happening? Nick, you're fucking you blowing it. truffle fries? Yeah, she's truffle. like, oh my goodness, I love those. Uh, yeah, Roslyn Social, we've had the owner, Nick on the podcast. Phenomenal individual, mm -hmm. great restaurant, great food. They actually switched all the fries to curly fries. I know. That's wow. a solid, wow. that's a solid love, move. That's, that takes it's, me back to it's ice delicious. cream. It's delicious. And so it's, it's truffle curly fries. Really? Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. They're great. Wow. I got to check that out. It's oh, right yeah. over here. Literally yeah. down the block. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've sent so many people. Uh, remember we had um, Gareth on? Yeah. Gareth is like, he's in the middle of the pocket. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm a big wing guy. We go, yeah, Ron's still telling He's like, yo, we're going right after, right? He's like, we'll get wings. <laughs> Done. We walked down the street. We walked down the block and we sat and had wings with him. That's awesome. So, yeah, Ron's and Social makes good uh, food. I, I mean, I guess it makes you appreciate it more when you're especially competing and 100%. doing your thing because, like, 
you look for it. So when, when that cheat meal is great, you remember those restaurants. But when that, when that cheat meal is shit, oh my God, you're like, well, I'm never fucking going back. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, people are like, did you try this place? I'm like, no, because I don't eat that type of food all the time. So mm-hmm. you eat like Five Guys, for instance. I like it. I'm, I'm not going to take a chance and go anywhere else. It took yeah. me like six yeah. months to try, um, to try uh, Shake Shack, you know? So. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. He kept driving like, past it. He was like, mm, nah. <laughs> yeah, about this time. <laughs> when you're when you're depleted and deprived mm-hmm. of something, you really enjoy it. So I enjoy when I eat that food. It's like literally, it's like an orgasm. Mm-hmm. Whereas I see people just sitting there for lunchtime, just like eating burger and fries, and they just like leave half it. I'm like, what? Well, what was wrong? What's with going the food? on with there? Like <laughs> nothing. I'm like, there's nothing wrong with that, and you didn't finish it. Like when I have a cheat meal, like I don't care if I'm full and I'm about to throw up. I eat everything. <laughs> uh huh. You know, Arashi eating the pattern off the plate. Yeah, it's like the people just eating like burgers and like, pizza like on a weekly basis. They don't even enjoy it. No. And then they think we're the ones that like, oh my God, I feel so bad. Don't feel bad for me. I enjoy my food, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, God. Now, now dude, I, now I'm thinking I'm about... Hungry. I'm thinking yeah, about... That was it. Yeah. I'm thinking about food. And they have the boozy slushies over there, too. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah, we, they, they have everything. We'll have to take it. So, speaking of which... Kenji's when, driving. Yeah, Kenji's driving. Kenji's driving as <laughs> home. Kenji's driving for the boozy, <laughs> the boozy slushies. What, um... What's in the pipeline? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you going to do next year? Mm. Any ideas? Any? Well, got to qualify for the Olympia. Yeah. Uh, my main focus is just getting back on that stage and being better. I haven't really thought about like what shows to do. Of course, I could do the Arnold. That you know, I'd, I'd love to do the Arnold. But my main focus right now is just my health. Yeah. Getting uh, the injuries sorted and being able to train as close to 100. percent You notice I say as close to because there comes a time where. You're not, you know, you're not always going to be able to train at 100. percent You know that. And you, that, and you, t- and I don't want to cut you off. You take your recovery serious, and you're not somebody that doesn't, re- you know, I, you have a whole recovery area in your place. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. I take it serious, but you know what? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like I haven't taken weeks and months off. It's it, it's smart for a competitive bodybuilder to not train for several weeks throughout the year. I haven't. Mm-hmm. Since 2014, I turned pro. There's like a fire lit under my ass. I'm like harder, more, more, more. You think more is better, and it's not. I try not to train more than three days in a row. Ideally, I think it's good to train, if you're training hard, two on, one off, two on, one off. So I've been training two on, one off, three on, one off. Um, but for in 2016, I didn't take days off. When I was training with, when I was with working with Aceto, I lifted seven days a week. And I was lifting heavy with retarded amounts of volume. And I remember I, uh, I I filmed most of those workouts. Yeah, yes, those are those are the golden the, the golden the, the, the towel in the mouth hack <laughs> squat. Yeah, yeah, of course I remember that. You know, look, it's like you know when someone's in the zone and they're hardcore and trained, you can't tell somebody to pull back. And if I myself now went and told myself then, I maybe I wouldn't have listened. But is it was it necessary? Maybe. You know, I'll give you a maybe. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, most guys are just going to tell you, you know, nah, push and this and that. I'm, I'm being honest, you know. So younger guys listening and out there, I, c- I could have held back a little. Ronnie could have held back a little. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about if me at that intensity and the intensity I train with now holding back a little is still freaking intense. It's yeah. still mm-hmm. very heavy, you know. Now, we and, all know when Rosh is in the gym. We hear him. <laughs> yeah. I'm loud. I'm that. I'm that guy. You know. When I was younger, I was like, "Why is this? Why are these guys yelling and screaming?" And now that's <laughs> that's me, you know. But um, listen, it's rough on the body. There's no way around it. Like if if you think if you lift weights or if you bodybuild and you think that's not going to happen to me, it's just the human body's not meant oh, to do dude, a lot of the, yeah. so you, Everybody gets injured at yeah. some point. You have to deal with something. Mm-hmm. You got to be very strategic. You have to be very smart. You have to park your ego aside at times you know and go as heavy as you can with good form and controlling the weight and then see how heavy that is Mm -hmm. you know yeah i mean you 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 really go in like uh, especially with your training partners how many training partners you cycle through because they can't they can't hang (laughs) yeah i like training alone. how's how's vicky doing Vicky's awesome. Love him. Vicky's an yeah. amazing guy. A fucking homie. We ben- he benefits from me. I benefit from him a Good. lot too, you know? Mm-hmm. I like training alone though. Like this is the first time training with Vicky that I've, I've trained with someone in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I put on the music and I, I push myself. Some people need someone to say, go do another one. Me, it kind of irks me. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> this guy a burger. I was going to say That's something. That's it. Can't you get him a burger? Look at this dog over there just fucking chilling. He's out cold. That's what he does, man. He's yeah. a podcast dog. He, he, wants to, he wants to chill with us. That's That's what he wants to do. Doesn't use that nice bed you bought him. Yeah, no, it doesn't <laughs> use the fucking bed. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I spent, actually, you know what? The bed that Max got him, though, he does use. Oh, I was yeah? filming Max at Costco, and I went, oh. Look at that bed over there. I said, that's a great bed Max right Charles? There. Yeah. Max is the man. Max yeah. grabbed it. 
Did I tell you? Did I tell you what? Uh, that time when, when Max, uh, <laughs> when I saw him backstage after I was filming you and and Flex and everybody at the at the Olympia, mm. I see Max down the tunnel. I said, "Yo, Max." He goes, "Oh shit, Rizzles." He goes, "What's up, man? What are you doing over here?" I said, "I don't know. I snuck back here." He goes, "Oh, good for you." I said, "Hey." You just got off stage. Can I get you anything? He goes, you got a W in there? You got a W in that pocket? Because that's the only thing you can fucking get me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't have that, Max. But Max is the man. If you want a burger. Max, Max looked yeah. great last weekend. He looked really good. Yeah, he looked incredible. Yeah. Well, I guess that kind of transitioned us into the Olympia. So yeah. Yeah. what did you think? Which class? Just everything. A little bit. You could just, I mean, I all, think all the was, men's. I mean. Well, first of all, for those that don't know, every single division except for classic had a new Mr. or Mrs. Olympia. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. That's exciting. You know, um, all the divisions are awesome. I watched all of them. Um, women's bodybuilding. I was very impressed with, you know, like who won that? Was that that chick Missy? I, I don't know her name. I, I forgot her name. Did, she she, did Shanique win again? No, she didn't. Missy came in first there. I That's think. Uh, women's physique. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Meadows was coaching, I think, Missy and yeah. Shanique. Very, Missy seemed very, she looked really, really good. She was nice in condition. Shanique is amazing. She's a, she, I think she has the best shape in the lineup. Uh, why they didn't give it to her, maybe they were, the, they were looking for a little bit more condition from her maybe. Um, but women's bodybuilding that just came back for the first time was, you know, you think like, a lot of people think the women's bodybuilding is not interesting. It's their kind of, you know, no one, no one likes it. But you, you, my hat goes off to them. They looked incredible. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. like, you have to be able to appreciate every single athlete in their respective divisions because yeah. everybody yes. works hard for what they do. The yeah. men's physique guys work hard. You know, you guys work exceptionally hard. The bodybuilders in both classes work hard. Mm -hmm. And the women are, it, it might just be, it's not mm -hmm. only as hard, but sometimes it's even tougher. Yeah. These girls are, looked incredible, very well-rounded. They're huge. Uh, classic, you know, uh, was awesome. The lineup was phenomenal. It's like everyone's just getting better and better. And, you know, a lot of the guys with really good shape and really good genetics, they're, they're young and they just started out. So you see them coming up now little mm -hmm. by little, which is really exciting. Um, I think Chris definitely deserved the win. He was probably the most improved in, I think, all divisions. <laughs> you know, it's really, we talked about this before, his back is really brought his back up. Chris's back was... Yeah, we'll have to add the photo yeah. to the video. Yeah. I mean, yes. It was a really, really big weak point. I, you know, I'm not saying anything that he doesn't say himself. It was... His back wasn't up to par, at, you know, for, for that... For the lineup. What I, I'm sorry to interrupt. What I really respect is that last year he made a, a point to say that, going, my back is my weakest yeah. point. And this year it was a completely different back. Yeah. Where he didn't say, oh, well, I know that's my weak point, but I'm glad I got the win. Absolutely. That's my weak point. I'm lucky to have won this one. This next year, I'm going to fucking earn it. I don't think it was his arms, too, he said. The, his, the arm, his arms. Yeah. His they bi came his up. His biceps came up a lot. His buys and his back. You know, I said this when Classic came out. Classic kind of caters a little bit more to the shorter guys. And it's not a cop-out or anything. It's just easier to be more well-rounded when you're shorter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So right. that just says so much for Chris because when you're tall, like most of the taller guys in Classic either don't have legs or don't have mm -hmm. a back. It's very difficult to be very, very thick when you have that that weight requirement, you know? Mm -hmm. So with Chris, his legs are huge, but his back was really lacking. And he brought it up and definitely deserved the win. Breon looked great. Well, I was about to ask, what did you think about them switching Terrence and Breon from the, from the it looked like from pre-judging to the night show? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think Terrence deserved it. Terrence is amazing physique. I think he's the best pro poser in the division. Um, he looks, Terrence is incredible from the rear, you know, from the back, he's he got really, really nice shape. Uh, I think Breon, I think he got a little bit bigger. I don't know what he weighed. It looked like he was a little bit bigger, and I think he may have um, given up some of the conditioning. So, you know, he's trying to maybe catch Chris with the size, but gave up the conditioning, and instead, Terrence caught him. Terrence is by no means a, a big guy, you know? No, yeah. Breon carries a good amount of meat on his, on his frame. Oh, dude, I saw Breon walk by. And listen, I'm around all of you guys, so it's like I'm used to... Yeah large individuals <laughs> brian walked by me when i was at the la fit expo a year and a half two years ago i was like the size of his fucking legs i was like jesus yeah. i've never seen him in person before i was amazed i sat there like he walked by i was like wow never even thought he was that like carried that yeah. much on him mm -hmm. you know one thing that they should do in the olympia um i should call them after this cool is uh, every single the division yep. i think the the commentator should have the weight height and age even bikini yeah and they don't need to commentate on it but they should have it in front of them. Mm. It's a little stack card. Because what's so interesting about bodybuilding is the different ages. You have women and men up there 22 years old competing against someone that's 44 years old. Mm. 
And for Classic and 212, 100% their weights should be announced. But it's it's interesting because a lot of people watching don't realize this. Yeah. Chris's mm -hmm. cutoff, if I'm not mistaken, is like 235. My cutoff is 215. Breon, that you're saying looked as big as he did, his cutoff is like 185. Oh, well, he was, he was in yeah. he was an off season yeah. when I saw him there. But his cutoff's like 185. Georgia was in the 190s. How tall, how tall is Breon? Uh, shorter than George. And George so, isn't short by So he's got to be like but... my height then. I really don't I'm like know. Five, I'm five yeah. seven. I don't have like the mm -hmm. chart memorized, but we're all different different weights. And then you have people throwing out things like, "Oh, the you know you should just go to two twelve. Like they said that to me before, and they I heard people saying it. I think even one of the commentators said for Breon to go to two twelve. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. First of all, Breon came from two twelve. Okay. <laughs> Second of all. You know, you don't need to be 212 to compete in 212. Sean Clarita is nothing close to 212, and he just won. But for Breon to max out that frame and be competitive in 212, we're not, we're not talking about like a bump in five pounds, you know? It's, he would have to gain a lot more size, and clearly he didn't want to or he didn't. He's 5'7", yeah. Mm. But the 196 is not his weigh-in weight. Yeah, of Maybe course that's not. just like his, they, his you know, like, yeah. regular weight. And for me, for instance, I've heard it a dozen times. Why don't you just go to 212? Well, I would... I can't, I have a hard time making 215 in classic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too tall for 212. At 212, mm -hmm. I'd look like a string bean, you know? There's a photo of me standing next to Dexter Jackson and Guy Cicernino, New York Pro. All three of us won. I won my division, they won theirs. So it's a great comparison photo. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see the difference. I don't look like a shrimp standing there, but you can see the difference in the muscle bellies and the density, especially in the legs. They're both shorter than What the year two. was it? 2016, New York Pro, Classic Physique. Well, it's the same as if you saw the uh, little pose down with Seabum and Rami. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> Those are two very different pills. Oh, man. But Chris is from the side, too, so it made him look so little. Yeah, I know. But um, Rami looked like he gained like 20 pounds of water. He looked a little bit smooth in that photo <laughs> he had, shoot. He had too. a good night. He was happy. Yeah. That one? Yes, that's it right there. Mm. But there's one where I'm hitting the most muscular. I look more like a... A shrimp in that picture. <laughs> but like that show, for instance, to give you an idea, I didn't, I weighed in the morning of the show. So I, I competed completely carb depleted. Mm -hmm. I had one or two carb meals after weigh in, which didn't even get to my muscles. Probably not. So I was on zero carbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I look like a, I looked so depleted there. And you compare that to the Olympia a few months later, looks like two different people. Yeah. Cause the Olympia, I rehydrated and carbed up for a day and a half. You know, I literally look like I gained 40 pounds of muscle for the Olympia. Google 2016 Arashra Bar, New York Pro, and then mm -hmm. Olympia. It's like, I have a, I have a back double bicep, like mm -hmm. copy and pasted side by side. It literally looks like four years apart. It's crazy. And there's just a couple months, just hydration. Mm -hmm. People yeah. understand how important that last week really is and how yeah. much it can really change your Oh, physique. yeah, that's right. That's when you did this photo shoot with you doing the arms behind your back. Yeah. Uh, this crazy. One. Can I ask you something? Did you not tan your face that, that, that Olympia? No, you know, I did. <laughs> Chris had the same issue this year, too. They tan our face, but they don't do it dark enough. <sighs> they didn't do it dark enough. So I had, right. if you see the video of me backstage giving an interview, my face is dark. Yeah, I, yeah. But I under literally the just saw it. Yeah, but <laughs> under the spotlight, it's not dark enough. Chris's face is really white this year, too. Color is tough, man. I don't, I, like, I was watching the Olympia and all the women's, like, uh, That was physique. my favorite for you. Sorry. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, that yeah. was my favorite for Sharp. You. Yeah, sharp. sharp. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm literally saving all these because we're going to add them to the video. Uh, <laughs> Your fan going about the guy sitting in front of you. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. That was my favorite because well, he came back and he was just like, he was like, yo, what are we doing? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it'll work out. You look great. <laughs> like, just we'll figure it out. I remember that. Yeah. But I'm sorry. You were saying the women. Their color was just incredible. Yeah. I don't know what, mm -hmm. it, what's going on. The pH. I mean, I take my color pretty seriously. Like I've been doing the same protocol that they taught me as an amateur. I basically... Um, moisturize every single day and night for the last few weeks so your skin will take in the color. So if your skin is dry, you're not taking the color even. You're mm -hmm. going to get patchy. And then you do an exfoliation. You can use baking soda, baking powder, or baking soda, baking soda, I think, with suave natural soap. Okay. And it, it like balances the pH. You do that the morning before you shave and everything to go in uh, color, the morning of. You know, you exfoliate like that so your pH is balanced. And you don't put anything on your skin. I always follow the same guidelines, and my color has been different. It's 2016. It was in, impeccable. I looked yeah. like a chocolate mm -hmm. bar. It was perfect. <laughs> you know, but there's been times where I had like the red pits, 
Uh, some of the color makes you red a little bit. Uh-huh. Like it's mm-hmm. just, it's kind of. I know from taking pictures, it's wild how it's every tough, person because yeah. you got to get your white balance right. When your color's not good, it's not good. Yeah, that was my problem almost every show. My first show it was okay, but after that, for whatever reason, my skin didn't take to all the color. Yeah. So I would you have got these... super dark one show, like super dark, if I remember super, correctly. Super dark. But what would happen is, um. I would have these streaks, and it would it would be all patchy of these yeah. big pat, black patchy darks. You know, back in the day, people did color themselves, and they did it over several days. Mm-hmm. That patchiness, if you go in the shower, it comes off. Yeah. So after my sh- thing is, I always look great. I always say, just spray me really heavy, and then the morning of, I wake up, I rinse it off. Whatever didn't stick, get it off me, and then I go yeah. spray again. But I've never tried to do it myself. I've never done it over several days. Maybe that's the key. You mm-hmm. know. But at the same time, it's like you know, everyone kind of uses the same color. Yeah. You don't want to like stand out completely. Like there's the, I don't know what it's called. It's like a popular name from back in the day. You look like a bronze statue. It's like, it's not legal. You can't use it in NPC and IFBB, but it's amazing color. But if you used it, you'd look stupid because you'd stand out so much. You put it on right then and there. It's not something you need to spray It's before. like a glaze. <clears throat> yeah, but it makes <clears throat> you look like a, literally like a bronze statue. <laughs> well, yeah. I know in my show, people were spraying themselves with Pam. Yeah, for the, sh- for the shine. I was like, yeah. damn, shine, bro. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so classic, I think, you know, it was well deserved. The placing was awesome. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, Breon, uh, you know, I don't know what that says to for Breon. Like George basically looked incredible year after year, kept placing third. And it basically what it, what they told him, you know, with or without telling him was like, look, even your best, it's not gonna be better than third. So he moved on to the other division. Mm-hmm. You know, like Chris has the the overall better look, that that classic look than everybody else in the lineup, and that's why he's Mr. Olympia. Open was uh, was fun. It was interesting. I'm very, very happy for Rami. I love yes. him. I love him as a bodybuilder and as a person. Mm-hmm. He's just the nicest, most humble guy. But Dude, of course, so this nice. isn't a personality contest. I mean, the guy, he's massive and he's, um, you know, I remember when he first hit the scene, everyone's like, this is going to be the next Mr. Olympia, but he wasn't coming in conditioned. You know, yeah, he was soft. Right. So he's, he lost like 15 pounds, which is a massive amount of weight when you look at him and you realize he doesn't look like he lost 15 pounds. <laughs> and and he's got much fat on him. He could probably lose another 10, 15 and still mm-hmm. be he'll just clearly as just as big, the biggest guy on stage. Mm-hmm. So very well deserved. He's incredible. Um, Brandon looked great, super sharp. But I just yeah. think on that lineup, he got like a little outsized, you know, even like Bonac and Hottie. They're big guys. They're shorter, mm-hmm. but they're really big. I'm a big Bonac fan. I think he's incredible. Um, just the roundness, the muscle bellies, like uh, very few people have that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Hadi, I think, uh, Hadi doesn't have the most pleasing shape, but he was very well-rounded, very, very conditioned and very hard. Mm -hmm. I could have seen, um, Hadi higher position higher. And I don't think anyone would have complained if he was higher. Is he still with uh, Hani Rambo? He's with Hani and is Phil with Hani still? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. I think I just saw a picture of them actually today sitting at dinner. And, uh, And that hit Andre, right? Andre, yeah. yeah. Andre's a really great guy. Really nice look. I'm a big fan mm-hmm. of his physique. So, yeah, that's that. And Phil, you know, I, look, Phil Heath is regardless what he placed and he came back and he couldn't do it again. He's one of the, he's going to be regarded as one of the best bodybuilders of all time mm-hmm. uh, in his prime. He's untouchable by anybody in the lineup, obviously. Um, but listen, when, when you're at the end of your reign, you know, all Mr. Olympias after five, six, seven years of being in the top, it's really tough. It, it, you, it beats up the body. Um, people really give him a hard time about the stomach. Tell, show me a Mr. Olympia that had a flat, tight, small waist and mm-hmm. stomach after six, seven years. You know? It's, we're talking six, seven years at the top, but he's bodybuilding yeah. for fifth, what, 15, 10. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy. You know, your body's beat up. It's not the same, and things don't look the same. Do you, you think know? he comes back next year? I don't know, man. That's totally mm-hmm. personal on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just that to kind surgery, of just do one more proving ground, I guess. Hard as you know, if it, it's, I mean, listen, you probably have, you are in probably his, the closest shoes out of anybody sitting at this table yeah. to understanding what that would feel like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, no one can answer that but him. But like what you said, to prove, it, the answer, it comes down to if he feels like. He really doesn't have anything to prove. But if, if he feels like I could be better. If he did everything in his power, and he, listen, he didn't take off because of, uh, well, he had the hernia, but he just didn't compete, but he was still training and everything. If he feels like he couldn't have done anything else and that was the best, then 
uh, no, I don't think there'd be any reason to come mm -hmm. back and keep falling further and further behind, yeah. you know? And um, the, the surgery and the scar is, it's rough. You can't, there's not much you could do about that. It's going to affect his midsection, mm -hmm. you know? And clearly the midsection has been being a little bit, is judged a little bit more the past couple of years. And luckily Rami's is <laughs> flat. I mean, the guys, <laughs> I've never seen someone as big as him with such a flat midsection. Yeah, it's crazy. You know? I, I mean, you know, you know the story when I picked him up from the from the airport. I don't, do I? I don't think I've heard that. Really? Yeah. Steve called me one night, like just the abbreviated version, because I've said it a couple times on here. Steve called me uh, one night. I, I I didn't go to the gym that day. And he just goes, uh, "Hey Nick, you want to do me?" Uh, Lou called me. He goes, "Hey Nick, you want to do uh, you want to do Steve a solid?" I said, "Sure." I said, "What's up?" He's like, "You do anything right now?" I said, "No, I'm just at home watching TV." He goes, uh, can you go pick Rami up from the airport? I went, yeah. <laughs> so I, I drive to the airport. Not with your Audi, did you? Well, yeah. I, I, Are you serious? I'm serious. I drive to the airport, and I'm sitting there. I'm just like, uh, yeah. He, I, like, I'm, like, I'm like, is he pre-contest? I'm like, or is, is he going to be like really big? I'm like, eh, whatever. So I get into the airport. I'm waiting for him. And I see him walk out the, the gate area. And I'm like, oh, Rami, hey, hey. And he's like, oh, hey, what's going on? Like, he comes over to me. I'm like, what's going on, man? I said, Steve sent me. He's like, oh, how you doing, brother? Yeah. I was like, good, man. Was your flight good? You know, I'm trying to talk to him. I said, come on, let's go. You know, I said, I get, I grab his bag. I said, I got it, man. You were just on a flight. So we start walking. Super nice guy. Like the nice. Excessively nice. Yeah. Like just so nice. I said, mm -hmm. can I get you a water? He's like, oh, please, please. I appreciate you. I get him a water. So we're walking out to the car and I keep like doing a double take on him. I keep like looking at him and just like going, mm, nah, that's all right. And like after a couple of minutes, because I didn't park close, I, I literally look at him and I went, Hey man, I don't think you're gonna fit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he goes, "Don't worry about it. We figured it out." I was like, "I don't know what that means either." But he wasn't even. It's like a normal thing. I was that like, he does all the time. I, I, all right, like cool. So we get to the car, unfazed. He was just like, "Cool," you know. Opens up the car door. He goes, "Oh wait," takes out takes out a hat. That's for my big Rami hat. He goes, "In case I don't see you again, here's a hat." I'm like, "Oh, oh that's awesome. Oh, like, that's fucking sick." So we, we get in, bro, he sat, my whole car just shifted. Wow. I was like, oh my God. So and he then, was off season or no? Yeah, he was so big. he was over 300 pounds. Oh, yeah. he's, that boy was big. Yeah. And then, it was like having a water buffalo in the car. And then, every time I shifted into sixth gear, he had to move his thigh. Wow. Because I just it couldn't, I, I just couldn't do it. Like, I was just like, hey, sorry. Bro, like, his yeah. legs... It, I don't even know. They're insane. He got so, he got so uncomfortable halfway through the ride though, because the seats are buckets. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he was like this in it. Yeah. I'm like I'm like yo, I'm trying to get you there asap, man. That's I like know, that's I said like I know that's so uncomfortable. In a go kart, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I don't. Exactly. I did. I used to do a lot of racing and stuff. I don't fit in the seats anymore, and I'm a quarter of him. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude, it was insane. You know. But I, the entire ride, talking about his diet, talking about you know why he stopped working with certain. We like we were just talking bullshit, yeah. talking about why he stopped working with certain coaches, why he likes to do this, uh, and then I put Busta Rhymes on, and he was dancing. So I was like, this is fucking <laughs> sick. Your I'm car like, was moving back and forth. Yeah, That's I was like, awesome. yo, this is, dude, dude, for real though, like it just. Yeah. Like it just shifted down. I'm like, man, I'm so glad I don't have my lowering springs on yet. Wow. I was like, because this thing would be <laughs> scraping <laughs> against the floor. Yeah, he's a. Uh, but I was I'm very excited when he won because I'm very. Happy. I just think yeah, he's, I think he's a, so happy. For I think him. he's just a great ambassador for the sport too. I mean, look, he, he was the people's champ as well. He, uh, yeah, I, mean, I haven't I haven't heard a bad thing about him. No, you never will. I yeah. just a sweet guy. Yeah. So it's like I like to see when nice people get rewarded for not only being nice but for their hard work absolutely mm -hmm. so yeah. that i thought that was great um what do you think about i mean i didn't really watch bikini but i saw angelica got fourth or fifth and yeah. she's really the main one that i'm friendly with yeah so like yeah. when i see i just see where she places and i thought that was a little low for her bikini's she, tough man like everyone looks so great angelica has a very she's more muscular than the other girls you would never think of angelica's muscular when you look at her on her own um, but she has more muscle on her yeah. frame. I like it. I like that look. I think she looks great. Yeah. Um, I was talking to her husband when she was on stage, yeah. Marco, mm -hmm. who yeah. I love. Marco's the shit. Yeah. So uh, that was a big, a big upset as well. Like uh, Issa, the current Miss Olympia, she yeah. didn't even place up there. Yep. Well, yeah. I don't know what they gave her. Like f five or six. I'm not even sure. Well. So Janet uh, won, which uh, Janet's been around. She's been getting second for many years. Janet's been in the circuit for a long time, one of the top bikini competitors. I think she looked great, well-deserved, very happy for her. But bikini is definitely tough. Men's physique in bikini is tough because everyone is – there's a lot of uh, guys and a lot of girls that just kind of fit in the same bracket. You know, they're mm -hmm. not – there isn't such a huge 
differentiation. Like when you look at the men's open bodybuilding, the top five, they're com- five completely different physiques, yeah. you know? So it's like a lot of times you'll get, um, the spectator will get lost and be like, what are they looking for? You know, the judges know what they're looking for, but we don't always see what they're looking at. You and know? what's hard too is because it's so similar, you could kind of justify moving any of the top five around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the men's bodybuilding, the classic physique or any of the other divisions, really. It's you won because of this, this, this. Yeah. Usually. Um, you know, J- Janet's taller and thinner. Yeah. Um, Angelica's shorter, more muscle. So, you know, I don't know what the judges are thinking or they're, they're looking for. I think they also understand how things change. And if they give it to one girl that's a little more muscular, maybe everyone else tries to catch up. And then the whole division changes, you know, and that's what mm-hmm. happened with Open after, after Dorian. So... Mm-hmm. Like, a big question is, is that what's going to happen now after uh, letting with, Rami win? That's what happened with figure to physique. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I don't think that's what's going to happen with Open because, no. you know, we've gone in both directions and, you know, sharpness and midsections have become a big factor. And I really don't think anybody has a capacity or capability of becoming as big as Rami and having that <laughs> midsection. Mm-hmm. So any bodybuilders out there thinking of trying to catch him with size or... That's gonna be rough. Yeah, nobody, nobody's play a different game, man. You know? Yeah, what nobody's training two, saying they don't want to be that big. What was he? Two ninety five, two ninety five shredded or two ninety yeah. shredded? Jesus Christ, dude, where like where do you go from there? Like that's get insanity. sharper, more detail, bring yeah. up the lower no, back. No, no, I'm saying not for him. I'm saying like how do you? Yeah, like just there's like no fat on him to begin with. So but like like that's what you know that's what happened with Dorian. You know, so Dorian hit the scene and he was the first mass monster, and everyone basically tried to catch up because we're not talking about like one guy just really big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's not conditioned. Like, he had the conditioning as well, and it just kind of bred bigger and bigger guys. Nasser came around. He was huge. Uh, then just Ronnie just started growing and growing. When, when Dorian retired that first year, it was up for grabs, Nasser was Mr. Olympia. Like, he was the best he'd ever been. Mm-hmm. That poor guy, you know, like, he was literally would have won, but Ronnie and Flex just came out of nowhere and out genetic the shit out of him. Mm. You know, if you guys Googled uh, 1990, it was eight or 1998 Olympia, mm-hmm. and you see those three in that lineup, unbelievable, man. Mm-hmm. You know, Ronnie was just huge with a small waist, shredded and dry. Mm-hmm. Ronnie looked like a, a horse. He looked like it his glutes like... looked like a cow's glutes. They were yeah. massive. When you can see someone's glutes from a front double bicep, it's, it's, it's impressive. These guys? Yeah, that's it right there, man. Ronnie was uh, huffing in that picture to Nasser. Right before that, Nasser kind of huffed at Ronnie, <laughs> and then he huffed back. You got to watch that on YouTube, man. 1998 mm-hmm. Olympia. It is insane. Oh, here they are all hitting the uh, Insane. Front. Yeah. It's wild. It's just different, man. I, you know, the guys, I, you, you know. Think of, you know, you think... Of, like my generation, like our younger guys, like although we know, it's like you know the older guys that were a couple of years prior, but like you focus on the guys that are in your bracket because yeah. we look at the guys that are competing now. But like when I see Flex Wheeler here, it's like I think of him how he looks now. Yeah. But like that's fucking insane. Mm. So I, I watch that, that, those clips a lot when I'm in prep, but it also, I grew up looking up to these guys. It kind of messes your head up because you look at these guys and then you look at yourself posing at your best and you're like, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> they, 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 that was the best what, ever. So now let me ask you, what's different? Like, uh, that's the question, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it different protocols? Is so, it okay, different well, some people food? Will, so I mean, it can't really Some people will say, yeah, everything's different. Protocols are different. Drugs are different. Food is different. Everything is different. Mm-hmm. Training is different too. Um, some people will say that the, the cameras are different and lighting is different. Cameras are better today, so you know better than me. I don't know how it's going to make them look better by having lower quality it'll them, cameras. It'll make them look sharper with newer cameras. Okay, but so it'll those also are bring out their cameras. Yeah, it'll bring sharper. out it'll bring out more flaws uh, also with mm-hmm. newer cameras on them. So look, there you know a lot of the older old school guys. If anyone's listening, knows about lighting and shows back in the day, and the lighting nowadays isn't really that comp- complex. I don't know what it was for that show, but a lot of shows back in the day had more complex lighting. They had lighting from the front and the rear. If you Google Melvin Anthony, one of the most famous like posing routines, Melvin was an awesome poser. One of the videos, you'll know when you see the thumbnail, just you put Mo- Melvin Anthony and he looks like he's glowing. Every single muscle has a shadow in every single angle. There was lights from the front on top, from the rear on top, from the bottom in front and bottom and rear. So there's lights coming up at him on both sides and down. 
So there was a shadow being cast in every single direction. So you can see every bump on their body. So that's a big factor too. So putting lighting and cameras aside, it's different, man. I think I, as funny yeah. as this might sound, social media has a big role in it. You know, back yeah. in the day, guys just trained. They did what they did and they trained. Oh, now, you mean they didn't, they didn't sit there and pose and post? And <laughs> well, look, top, top bodybuilders now don't sit on their phones during their training. I hope not. But mm -hmm. what I mean is that, like, it's a head game. So you go home after training, you go on social media, and you see what what Jay is eating, you see yeah. what Kai is doing, you see what Rami's doing, and, and you start thinking, well, should I eat that? Should I do this? Whereas mm -hmm. back in the day, nobody saw anything. No one knew what the other guys were doing. Some of them lived on the other side of the country or the other side of the world. So that was, that's one factor. Um, and yeah, the, the protocols are different. Guys are trying to do different things. There's a lot of new training protocols, a lot of new supplements, and I think those are big factors. Factors. Hey, Kenji. <laughs> <laughs> this is a minute he does this every time. Mid-podcast, mid hello. <laughs> so those are big factors. I mean, it's, it's very different, man. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, it's very, I'm not going to say one's better or worse, but like that dryness and conditioning those guys had, you don't see it that much these days. No. Yeah. I, fi I find guys have a hard time peaking now. Like you don't see enough guys <clears throat> peaking correctly. That's what I find. I, listen, I have I feel very... like I feel like 90% mm -hmm. of the guys you saw in a lineup back then all – Bone dry, ready to go. I couldn't agree more. I, yeah. I have the same problem, you know? I've had long talks with some of them. I spoke to with Flex Wheeler. Uh, nice, for, nice guy? Yeah, Flex is a great guy. Flex mm -hmm. has changed a lot throughout the years of everything he's gone through, you know? Um, it's almost, but also, it's hard asking a Flex Wheeler, a Kevin LeBron, and a Ronnie Coleman. Those guys are, like, just genetically... Freaks. They're just freaks, and... <clears throat> Not only do they grow easy, easier and, and conditioning and all this stuff, but also peaking. Like me and George, we were both working with Justin. Uh, I did the Arnold and the Olympia. We did after weighing, we did the same thing. They didn't work for me. I looked like crap after, yeah. you know. And George, just like anything you throw at the guy, he's just like. <laughs> well, he's also ready like eight weeks out from a show. Yeah, yeah, George is just incredible. But George is like one thing people that don't know him, his work ethic. He's the most down to earth, humble guy. I love him to death. But. George works hard. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I, I would say George is like the old school guys with the diet and training. Like, I, you know, I can say this without even, you know, seeing everything that George does. Like, with me and George, there's no if. There's no, like, we don't miss training. Well, that's my we time. don't miss uh, cardio, like, in our preps. There's no... And if a coach says something... You do you it. Do it. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not second guessing. You're not Look, I'll talk to them about it. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a concern if, if I'm concerned about it, but I don't say yes and do something else. There's no like cheating on the diet. Like, I guess if you're an amateur, okay, fine. But at this level, it's not a question. I don't go into a diet worried like, am I going to be able to do it? Like, I'm doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. so being, suffering a little bit or being a little hungry, you get over it, man. Just tough it up. There's no like sneaking something outside the diet. You know, bodybuilding is, is I, I say it's the hardest sport by far. Not to take anything from other sports. I, I ran track, I played football, I fought, did martial arts for like 16 years. You know, you have like LeBron James, they talk about he has the, the craziest work ethic in the NBA and he trains how many times a day? Trains several times I don't know, a but day. I know he said, they said lot. something, they spend like a million a year on recovery. Yeah, that's not easy. I'm not saying what LeBron no. does is 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 easier than what we do no but there's so many different elements that drain you mentally as well in bodybuilding like you're working when you're eating you're working when you're sleeping you know like if lebron's doing that training if he feels like eating a, a, tick, a twix bar or feels like getting a burger and fries he could do it and get away with it mm -hmm. we can't do that you know so it, it just makes it that much harder uh, I definitely think it's the hardest sport, mentally, physically. No, he's okay. He's Stop. Actually, feels good. <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm starving too. <laughs> but yeah, did you ever get an answer from anyone else about why the 90s are so different? No. I mean, you probably talked to more of those guys than I have. Yeah. You know, I only talked to like the, the, the bunch of guys like in the gym that... I remember the golden years, like those types of guys. Like, when, they, uh, when everybody was benching 405. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they might, I, used to, I used to rep it out. Um, look, I do see some pros in different divisions. Like, I'm not going to say the top guys in open and the top guys in classic, but I have, I have seen some guys that I feel like could be training a little harder and dieting a little harder. You know, but then again, we're not talking about those guys, right? We're talking about the top, top guys. Uh, I don't know. And he's had, I mean, he's had longer interactions, obviously, with Dorian because he went to go train with him. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he was, how long were you them? A week? Yeah, I was there for a week. week. Did he tell you the secret? All the secrets, but I can't say it here. <laughs> but for yeah, the low, low price of $10,000, absolutely. <laughs> Did he tell you the difference of the 90s? 
The difference, not really, but it was more so just the work ethic. The work ethic. Is what he saw. The work ethic, and I believe people are overcomplicating Beak Week right now. Because we know so much more scientific-wise how to manipulate the body, where everybody's trying so many different things. Back then it was carb up, not too much. You know how much your body can handle. Have some salt, cut your water, and that's kind of it. Yeah, that's what I believe in. And if you're in shape, there's no hocus pocus. You're, You're in shape. Get that 1% better and that's it. My goal is to be able to do that. Yeah. Unfortunately, the reason I haven't been able to just do that basically is because my peak week depends on me making weight. That's it. Mm-hmm. So I, I go in, let's make weight, and then we got to worry about the rest <laughs> yeah. after. So if I could be at weight like a week out, two weeks out, that's the best for me. Yeah. And then I can just kind of go in and- Coast you know, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, work ethic, I think that's a big thing, you know, a big factor. But you know, Dorian, it's like- even back then, who had Dorian's work ethic? Listen, maybe the guys didn't train as intense as, mm-hmm. as, intense as Dorian because he trained the most intense. Ronnie trained the heaviest. But everyone trained pretty hard, man. There was a guy, the photographer, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't remember his name, but I think he's a Japanese photographer. He would basically travel and go to every single one of these guys and film them for a few days. And that's the, the only glimpse that we got of these guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were awesome, awesome videos. A Road to Olympia. That's sick. And it would be Ronnie Coleman, yeah. Kevin LeBron. They were amazing, amazing. You know, they're gems. They're probably out there on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And that's all we would see. And they all, they all worked hard, man. They all suffered. <clears throat> you know, Kevin always did like super low carb and, you know, heavy ass weight. They're just all freaks. Yeah. It might just come down to uh, who is that intense when the camera's turned off. Yeah, that's true too. Not even, oh, not even just in the gym. I'm just saying the other 23 yeah, hours of the day. Absolutely. A lot of people also talk about supplements and drugs, mm-hmm. um, and, they'll, and they'll use that as a, as a reason, and very much well could be, you know? Sure. So, yo, let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. You got the app coming out. Yeah. What's the app going to be? It's going to be training. It's going to be diets. What's it going to be? It's going to be everything. There's going to be different training programs that you can follow. So you can click onto a training program and follow a six week or eight week program. Dope. There'll be mm-hmm. several programs. So like everyone's different, you know, so I'm going to have like a bro split. I'm going to have like a push pull split. Oh, the bro split. Yeah. Huh? Mm. And then there's going to be a lot of um, informative like Q and A's, uh, explanations. There's going to be breakdowns. It's going to not only training, it's going to be like basically like having me as a coach in your pocket. So it's going to allow you to look up certain foods, know the macros, give you the tools and information you need to make your own diet. I'll constantly be sharing stuff about my training, my diet, answering questions through the app. app. People will be able to message me, Mm -hmm. ask me questions. I'm also, um, after the app launches, I'll probably make a a Facebook community page where everyone can Mm -hmm. come on there and I can come on there and answer questions. Um, Basically just, I've been going through the past 10, 15 years. I mean, I've been bodybuilding 27 years, but in the industry and seeing like so many mistakes and so many misconceptions and so many, so much knowledge information out there, but still people are making the same mistakes. So if you have someone that can just basically tell you like, this is the fundamentals, this is what you need to focus on with not only training, but nutrition too, you're going to get so much more in such a short period of time. And so many young guys get discouraged because they think they're doing something that they're supposed to be doing, but it's wrong. And they're yeah. just wasting a lot mm-hmm. of time, you know? So it's not gonna, it's main, the, the app is mainly training, but I'm gonna have a lot of other stuff on there. Um, and a lot of videos of me explaining things from nutrition to, to, to training and just the, some of the basic stuff and some really complicated stuff. You know, a lot of guys don't know these intensity techniques and when they should be used or why they should be used. I have a whole video that I just filmed the other day about one rep max. Is mm-hmm. it needed? Do we need one rep max as bodybuilders? And, and even if you're not competitive bodybuilder, if, you're, if mm-hmm. you're training in the gym for changes in body composition, even if you're a six-year-old woman, you're a bodybuilder, you're building your body. Mm-hmm. If you're training just for strength and to compete in powerlifting, you're a powerlifter. Yeah. So one rep max is when you, for those that don't know, when you can, a, a weight that you can lift for just one rep. Well, all the studies that we were talking about earlier, they're 30% of one rep max train at 60% of one rep max. So a lot of people think they need to know their one rep max. Well, me, I'm a professional bodybuilder, four-time Olympian. Is it four times? Yeah. It would have been five. Um, I don't know. I don't know what my one rep max is. He's going in on that. Stop, bro. 
So I don't know what my one rep max is. And frankly, to be honest with you, it would be so difficult for me to figure it out. I have to put in so many uh, hard, heavy sets. It's not worth it. It's, there's too much risk than re reward. So how do I come up with these percentages? I don't. I never sat down with a calculator and said, okay, for eight to ten reps, at, you know, eighty percent is this weight. I, you just mm -hmm. go by feel. Yeah. Listen, it's gonna take someone comes on my program and I say do this many reps. It's gonna take them a couple days or maybe a week or two to figure out. Hey, you know. That's the weight I need to do for eight yeah. to ten. Yeah. I've picked up weights dozens of times, and I was supposed to do eight to ten reps, and I did fifteen. I mm -hmm. oh, it's too light. Or I now I got into the point where I pick up the weight, just picking it off the rack or doing that first rep. I know that I can't do this for twelve, or yeah, I can do yeah. it. I, I know yeah. that too yeah. at this point. You know, and th these are like the most important factors. Everybody wants to know what do you do, what exercise do you do for chest. They ask Ronnie what exercises he does for chest. They ask George Peterson what exercises they have that he does for back. It's irrelevant. It's mm -hmm. how you do it, not what you do. And those are the last guys you should be asking because they, George's mind muscle connection for his back is so freaking good genetically. It's just <laughs> yeah. gonna grow. Yeah, his brain you literally know? lives in his back. You know, you know who you should ask about a body part? Go find a top tier bodybuilder, someone that takes their body and their career very seriously. And if you want to know like chest or whatever it is, mm -hmm. find the one with the weakest chest and ask that bodybuilder how to train chest. Because mm -hmm. I promise you that guy has turned over every stone and asked every trainer and done tons of research because he has a weak chest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Arnold is the worst person to ask about a chest. That guy's <laughs> chest has been like that since he was 16. You know? He woke up one morning and was there. Pretty much. He was the statue yeah. already. Yeah. So. Mm. When's the app launch? Uh, I'm shooting for the new year. Cool. Yeah. So mm -hmm. January. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And then how will people be able to get it? It'll just be linked through Through your... my page. I'll be promoting it. There'll be a landing page. Right now on my Instagram page, there's a link where you can sign up and put in your email. So if you do that now, you get the first month for a dollar. And just hey, in case right. people don't know, what is your IG? Arashra Bar. At... Arashabar? Bar, just at Arashabar. Bar. He Arash Bar. Mm -hmm. There's no no others. No, often imitated, and yeah. and often imitated, never duplicated. Is that what exactly, it's called? Yeah, I think so. Like, All right, man. Listen, I appreciate you coming down. It was a pleasure, man. You're the Absolutely. homie as usual. You're always welcome on anytime you, you want. Come mm -hmm. through. It's just nice to shoot the shit with you, bro. But next Absolutely. time we gotta have burgers while uh, we're and just so people can just listen like an ASMR. Yeah, so, like, oh, just, yeah, so <laughs> I was gonna say I'm not gonna be doing any talking, yeah. man. Yeah, no, no, no. Chewing in the mic and just people like we'll give Kenji a mic. Hope he fills in the gaps. And then I'm gonna fall asleep after. Yeah, that's it. We're gonna have to keep hitting with a cattle prod. You ever see that video of Meadows training with the cattle prod? No. Oh. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. <laughs> Someone's hitting him or he's hitting they're, someone? They're sh shocking each other. Wow. I'll have to show you when we're done. It's fucking That's insane. nuts. Yeah. We should do that next time. We should do the podcast and then take it take it out on the road. We should. Maybe like have someone film us and talk while we're eating or something. Good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. Done deal. On that note, I'm going to have John kick this outro. So I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in this week's episode of The Voice. And Rizzle's joined by the one and only Arash Rabar. Let's get it, baby. Peace.